SkyderMacCoach.com. A standard capsule rex is despite uneven dilation. So even if the patient has an asymmetric pupil, you need to ensure centration of your rexes. So let's start the case here. Now you're thinking, wait a minute, that's pretty good dilation. It looks pretty symmetric here, right? Yeah, and most of your cases do. But remember, some patients like this one can have a bit of a floppy iris. And you'll see as we start the rexes, that's going to change a little bit. So there's the anesthetic inside the eye. Here comes the viscoelastic dispersive agent getting a nice fill of the anterior chamber. And again, here the pupil looks pretty symmetric. Good dilation. That's going to be pretty easy, right? Well, not so fast. So, make our main incision here. Here's the diamond keratome. This is a complete cataract case shown start to finish from the very first incision to the end of the case. You get to learn by seeing the whole case. Don't worry, it's only five minutes. Now, I'm going to start with the capsule of forceps. So look what happens. There's just some asymmetry there. I'll start at the rectus here, poking in. There, we finally poked in. And now look at the top right of your screen there. That pupil's coming down a little bit. It's not so symmetric. Now, the mistake here would be to make the rex is just kind of following the pupil. Nah, nah, nah. Watch this. Get that rex is completed, and you're thinking, wait, you're too close to the iris there. But look at the asymmetry there. I want the rex is centered on that lens capsule. Beautiful. Five millimeters measured. You saw it. Just that easy to get the rex done. But look at the dilation now. It's a little asymmetric. So we'll do some hydro dissection here. Get that nucleus separated from the lens capsule. There we go. Okay, we'll prolapse it out. Not too dense of a cataract. So we'll get that lifted up here out of the capsule bag. Notice how I lift it up a little bit extra so it doesn't fall into the capsule bag. A small aliquot of viscoelastic there to protect the corneal endothelium. Here comes the phaco probe, 2.2 pink sleeve going inside the eye, beveled down. You know that's what I like. You can do it any way you feel. Here's the chopper in, buzzing over the phaco probe. Chopper goes around the lens, and there's two halves, just like that. Let's emulsify down the first tap. I don't think we need to do much more chopping than this. Um, I am using phaco power modulations to minimize the total amount of ultrasonic energy placed inside the eye. That's a burst mode or pulse mode if you want. And you want to use a variable duty cycle. So less than 50% duty cycle for those pulses. And here comes the second half coming up. Again, chopper going around it. And we can chop it again. And there's two quarters. And each of these can be taken down pretty easily. What I want to show you is obviously the end of the case here where you see the rexus. Now, for whatever reason, you can see there's a little bounce in the pupil, in the iris, a little bit of asymmetry there. This patient does have some floppy iris syndrome, some IFIS, and we're managing that pretty well there. Notice how I came out in position one, but very gently to not let the iris prolapse. Now let's take the eye probe, go inside the eye, take out the cortex, and we'll clean this cortex up quite nicely. And you can see, at the end, we'll have a beautifully centered capsular axis that's going to overlap our optic 360. And so, cortex removal is pretty straightforward here. And you can see there's the outline of the rexus. And you can see now the rexus looks pretty good. But during the capsular axis creation, you saw the iris dilation was not totally straight here. So just taking out the last bit of it here, we're going to polish up the capsule too a little bit. That looks pretty clean though, I like that. And by the way, good draping, eyelids sequestered, no lashes in the field. Good, good, good. Here comes the cohesive viscoelastic agent, injecting it in the capsule bag. There we go. Nice, good fill. And let's come with a capsule polisher. Let's clean up that undersurface of the anterior capsule room just a little bit. Not too much stuff that's there, but a little bit of polishing back and forth. You can use any kind of polisher you want. If you'd like to use just the FACO probe or the IA probe, pardon me, on a low vacuum level, you can do that as well. But we've cleaned that little bit of material up. Here comes a single piece of acrylic lens. And you can see, obviously, that's a beautiful looking rexus now. Now, we still have cohesive viscoelastic in the eye. That's what's keeping the pupil kind of dilated as well. Once we get this lens in the capture bag and take out the viscoelastic, the pupil may move around a bit. And we're still happy because we can be ensured that that rexus is still beautifully centered, five millimeters or so in diameter, maybe a pinch more, overlapping that optic 360 nicely and securely holding that optic in place. Looking good. Viscoelastic removal go behind the lens optic. There we go. And vacuum, 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 take all that stuff out and set up our lens again. Maybe a little bit more cleaning up here. Looks beautiful. So that's my take-home lesson for you. Now, in this case, at the end, once we have all the infusion going through the eye and there may have been some epinephrine in there, so it keeps the pupil a little bit more dilated. But during the rexus creation, you saw the pupil was less than beautifully symmetric. 
And as a result, we had to keep in mind what was our goal here, how to keep it beautifully centered for, for the capsorexis. And now look at the outcome. We're really happy with that. That's a beautiful outcome. Patient's going to be very happy. And thank you for watching.